GoForTheChew.com in with our week four college football predictions. We'll jump right into it. An intriguing battle in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and Pittsburgh. Two weeks ago, Pittsburgh got the 42-39 victory over Penn State, but they allowed 332 passing yards in that matchup to Trace McSorley. They followed that up last week on the road with a gutty, gutty game against the Cowboys, but that defense allowed 540 passing yards to Mason Rudolph and that Cowboy offense. That was a school record. They now have to go back on the road to Chapel Hill to face another high-powered offense led by quarterback Mitch Trubisky, who's completely Leading 73% of his passes, five touchdowns, no intercept. No interceptions on the year. North Carolina as a team is is averaging 296 passing yards per game. They have big play wide receivers of Mac Hollins and Ryan Switzer that can stretch that pit defense vertically. And I think this is a, a very difficult spot for Pittsburgh. I think North Carolina at home dominates this matchup. I look for the Tar Heels to pick up a 20 point victory over Pittsburgh in this ACC conference game. It's a classic battle, but North Carolina does pick up a 20-point victory over Pittsburgh Saturday afternoon. Another intriguing battle is Chad Kelly and the Ole Miss Rebels. They're back home again. They played a very gutty effort against Alabama. They were up in that matchup 24-3. to Let that lead slip. It was 24-17 to at halftime. Alabama took control late in the fourth quarter. They had an 18-point lead and had to hang on for a 48-43 victory over Ole Miss. This is the second time this year that Ole Miss has built a big lead. They did it week number one against Florida State. They had a 22-point victory uh, lead in the first half and let that lead slip. Lost that game by 11 points. But on the defensive front in the second half, they are getting worn down on the defensive side of the ball. You could see it very evident in the second half of that matchup against Alabama. They now have a conference game with Georgia, who pulled off a 28-27 victory over Missouri in Columbia Saturday night. Georgia's averaging 185 yards on the ground. Nick Chubb does have over 300 yards rushing for that team. I think this is a bad spot for Ole Miss. Another emotional letdown against number one ranked Alabama where their defense got worn out in the second half. You look at Ole Miss overall, they're giving up 260 rushing yards to opposing offenses. I think this is a bad spot. I look for Kirby Smart and that offensive line of Georgia to wear down Ole Miss. And I do think that the Bulldogs pick up a 27-24 upset victory over Ole Miss and Chad Kelly this coming weekend. Another intriguing battle is Texas A&M and Arkansas. Both teams are undefeated at 3-0. It's a rivalry game since 2011. Texas A&M is 4-1 against Arkansas and has won those games by 18 points per game. Last loss by uh, Texas A&M to Arkansas came in 2011 where Arkansas picked up a 42-38 victory. Two weeks ago, Arkansas looked great in Fort Worth where they got the double overtime victory over TCU. They dominated at home last week while Texas A&M got a gutty 13-point victory on the Plains in Auburn. You look at this matchup overall, I think it's a speed factor for Texas A&M and quarterback Trevor Knight. I think they can exploit that Arkansas secondary that's given up 224 passing yards per game. You look at... Uh, Texas A&M right now, they're averaging 296 passing yards a game. Trevor Knight only completing 52% of his passes. But you look at his big play wide receivers of Christian Kirk and Josh Reynolds. They're stepping up. They are making plays all over the field. They've combined already for 31 receptions on the year. I think the speed of Texas A&M takes over. And you look at Texas A&M's defense right now. They're only giving up about 130 rushing yards on the ground. I think they could force Austin Allen to be one-dimensional in that matchup. I think they could shut down the run against Arkansas and, more importantly, force them into third down and long situations. As a team right now, Texas A&M on the defensive side of the ball is four Forcing opposing offenses to only convert 30% on third downs. And you look at Miles Garrett and Deshaun Hall in that front seven. 
through three games, they already have 12 sacks on the year. And Armani Watts, their big play safety, is very solid in run support. I think that's a benefit for Texas A&M. And I do think they get a double-digit victory in this matchup and move to 4-0 and on the year. It's not going to be easy. It's a rivalry game. But I do, in fact, think that Texas A&M does pick up a 14-point victory over Arkansas this coming weekend. Another intriguing battle is... Florida State and South Florida. I was all over Florida State last week. I was dead wrong as they played Louisville. I thought they, the defense would step up. But more importantly, I thought that they would utilize Dalvin Cook and the running game to keep Lamar Jackson off the field. That didn't happen. DeAndre Francois did not look good. He looked like a redshirt freshman in that matchup. And Florida State got embarrassed on the road 63-20. to They now go on the road again to face South Florida This is a difficult spot because this is a rivalry game. South Florida has playmakers on the on the offensive side of the ball and quarterback Quentin Flowers and Marlon Mack, and they have a physical offensive line that can run the football between the tackles. You saw what Lamar Jackson was able to do. Well, defensively, Florida State was not good in run support in that matchup. I think this is a very difficult spot for Florida State. They're going on the road. Back-to-back weeks, and more importantly, they're facing a very athletic team that played Florida State very well last year in Tallahassee. That score last year was not indicative of how well South Florida played early on in the year last year. Quinn Flowers has another year in Willie Taggart's system, and I look for the upset again. I'm not sold on Florida State. Very disappointing. I think the Bulls get the upset at home and hand Florida State their second loss in back-to-back weeks. In my opinion, this is an emotionally reeling team, and I like the Bulls in the upset. Let's call it 33-28. to South Florida gets the upset victory over Florida State this coming weekend. Another intriguing battle. Very intriguing battle is Michigan and Penn State. Michigan held on for a 17-point victory over Colorado last week. Lou Fowl, the Colorado quarterback, got hurt. He did not play once Michigan did have a 10-point lead in the second half. But Michigan fell behind by a score of 21-7 to in that matchup. They had to claw their way back. They did hold a 24 to 21 halftime lead and really came out in the second half. But Colorado really beat up Michigan early on on the offense and defensive lines and moved the football consistently. They played Penn State over the last couple of years. Michigan has won both games by an average margin of victory of eight and a half points per game. But I like what Penn State's doing here. I don't think they have the best talent. I don't think they win this ball game, but it is a Big Ten conference game. And I think Barkley, the Penn State running back, can run the football consistently against Michigan's defensive front seven. Don't think it's the same dominant defense in terms of run support. And I think James Franklin, as a big underdog, pushes Michigan to the limit in this battle. Not a lot of people expecting Penn State to be in this battle from start to finish. But I think they could be there. They lost this battle 28-16 to last year in Happy Valley, but they played very well against the Wolverines. I expect them to slow down the tempo, get into an ugly game, and I do think that Michigan pulls up, picks up a seven-point victory over Penn State, but it is not going to be easy. The Nittany Lions are in this ballgame from start to finish. We'll keep our, our uh, picks with two Pac-12 games Intriguing Pac-12 games. You're talking about Cal going on the road to Arizona State. Cal got a 50-43 to victory last week at home in Berkeley against Texas and Charlie Strong. Davis Webb and that offense looked fantastic. They moved the ball at will through the air against Charlie Strong in that defensive front seven. They now go on the road to face a very blue-collar team. Here's the matchup you want to keep an eye out on. Arizona State is averaging 260 rushing yards on the ground with Kalen Balaj and Demario Richard. Very physical offensive line. You look at Cal's defensive front. They're allowing 296 rushing yards on the ground. You watch this game last year. Cal picked up a two-point victory over Arizona State, but Arizona State in the first half of that matchup last year in Berkeley ran all over Cal's front seven. They could not shut down Demario Richard. In the second half, Berkovici in that offense was a little inconsistent and allowed Jared Goff in that offensive uh, firepower to 
get back into that matchup, but I don't think so at home in Tempe. I think this defense is a lot better than people think. I think Manny Wilkins can play within the system, and I think Todd Graham and this Arizona State offense wear down Cal in this matchup. They're coming off an emotional victory, but their defensive front seven is atrocious, and I look for the more physical offensive line in Arizona State to get a convincing 17-point victory over Cal this coming weekend. Keep in mind, too, that Cal... Two weeks ago, had to play a very physical offensive line in San Diego State. They lost that matchup in San Diego 45-40. to They had to claw, claw their way back. Texas ran the football at will on, on Saturday night against the front seven of Cal as well. Now they have to go back on the road. Even though it is Arizona, they have to face another physical offensive line. And Todd Graham wants to pound the football between the tackles with Bellage and Demario Richard. I think that's a recipe for disaster. I think Arizona State does get a convincing victory over Cal by 17 points and moves to 4-0. Uh, a surprising 4-0 in Tempe after this weekend. Another intriguing battle. Stanford goes on the road to UCLA. Stanford's own the series. They're 6-0 over the last six seasons and has dominated by more than 17 points per game. You look at last year, they, they wore down UCLA in that matchup, dominated a double-digit victory in Palo Alto. But I was very impressed with the way UCLA play, played last week on the road in Provo. They were able to contain Taysom Hill in that physical offensive line. They dominated that matchup for three quarters. They were winning that matchup 17 to nothing and really called off the offense. I think they could have really poured it on and unfortunately won that ball game only 17 to 14. But I look at the defensive front seven by UCLA in terms of run support. They're only giving up 133 rushing yards on the ground. I think they can make Stanford's offense one-dimensional and really contain Christian McCaffrey. And more importantly, I look for Josh Rosen to have a better game this time around in the Rose Bowl. I'm calling for the upset. UCLA knocks off Christian McCaffrey and Stanford in this battle. I, I like the playmakers, and I like the way the defense is playing in the secondary going up against Stanford. I know they have a big physical offense and defensive lines. But I like UCLA's front seven. I think they're athletic and they're playing very well. And I look for Josh Rosen to get this victory Saturday night. I think it's very high scoring. I think it's a 37-30 to UCLA victory at home. They upset the Cardinals Saturday night. I'm going to break down all the other big games on my radio show on SB Nation Radio. That's 10 a.m. through 12 p.m. every Saturday. You can follow it, sbnationradio.com or go to Fantasy fantasy.com slash radio you can listen live we're going to cover florida and tennessee we're going to cover lsu and auburn we're going to break down all the marquee battles michigan state and wisconsin as well but these are my picks for the weekend stay with me all season long at go for the two.com college football is great i just love talking about it